Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. As you can see, I have a big thing today on my table. It's the new iMac. And usually I don't do unboxing, but this is a special case because this is an unusual iMac. It's the iMac without the stand and it's with the Visa mount. And also I have a custom stand here. So let's do short unboxing and setting it up. When I first saw this box, I hoped that this could be a new Apple Watch band, but unfortunately, it's just a strap. So, let's open it. Okay, it says, hello. Let's pull the arrows. Oh, really nice. Okay, so, yeah, as you can see, we have no stand here, just the iMac with this custom plate that we will attach to the stand in a little bit. Let's put it aside. We do have the keyboard here, the mouse, the cord, the power brick, and another cord which matches the color. Oh, we even have a lightning to USB-C port cable that matches the color as well. And this company sells HomePod Mini in black with a white cord. Shame, shame, Apple. Okay, so let's put everything that we need out. By the way, a very important thing is that now we have two Apple stickers matching the color of the iMac. Really nice. So it seems that we have everything we need so now we shall mount the iMac to the stand. Okay, let's open this up and this watercolor. So all we need is the stand to be put over here. Now let's screw these four screws. Now we shall mount it, be sure that it holds it, okay. And here we go. Hello. Okay, let's do some cable management now. I do have Wi-Fi, of course, but well, we have Ethernet here, so why not to try the Ethernet cable then? Okay, so in Apple's new vision, this should be hidden, so that's what we shall do. All right, we've set it up the iMac. That was quite quick and easy, I should say, and that's why I admire the Apple way, so you don't have to be a skilled mechanic to set up the Visa mount and to attach the iMac to it. So now I will spend a few days testing up the iMac, but for you it will be a couple of moments, so let's start the review. Okay, it's me again. Two weeks have passed and I'm so excited to share my thoughts on this device, so feel free to use the time codes or watch the entire video. So first of all, why Visa mount? This machine is meant to be a family computer. Adults can check their emails, do browsing, even edit their photos or videos from the latest vacation. Children may do their homework, Skype with friends, watch cartoons, even play simple games. And Visa mount allows us to adjust the iMac to every family member so that they could sit in a more healthy pose and enjoy their time. Also, this is kind of a tribute to the iMac G4, which was the last iMac with a stand that flexible. And don't forget that you can attach any 100 to 100 Visa stand to this machine, so it could be attached to your wall or mounted to a more compact stand. You have to make the decision before buying, because starting from this generation, iMacs with stands do not support Visa mounts and vice versa. So once you buy it, you're stuck to it. Now let's look at the accessories. The keyboard itself didn't change much. The keys have the same size, same feel and the same sound. At first I thought it became less noisy, but after two weeks the keys sound exactly the same as the old ones.
For those who used to call the dashboard by clicking F4, now the spotlight is there, so you'll either have to get used to it or remap the key using a third-party software. Also, they moved back to the T-shaped arrows in the latest MacBooks and in the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro, but not here. Personally, I don't care that much, but well, some consistency would be better. By the way, if you are a fan of a full-sized keyboard with numeric keys, Apple has them with the Touch ID too. Look for them in a long keyboards list when ordering an iMac, they are there. Touch ID is not as clicky as other buttons, so you won't accidentally lock your computer while typing because you have to press the button to lock or unlock your device. Touch is not enough for Touch ID. The response is quick, I cannot complain, and the delay is shorter than half a second, and that's acceptable. I don't really feel this machine needs a Face ID because that would also need you to press something on the keyboard to start scanning you, so to me Touch ID is totally enough. In case you are curious, yes, Touch ID would work with the M1 MacBooks and you won't need any additional setup. It will simply work with the fingerprints that were already added. And no, it won't work with the latest iPad Pro on M1 because, well, go and enjoy Face ID tablet bastards. The Magic Mouse is a complete disappointment. It hasn't changed at all. Well, it changed the color to match the iMac and it's now a bit grayish on top, but the new and old mice share the same model number. In general, I expected a broader update for the peripherals because, come on, we all want a backlit Magic Keyboard with a Magic Mouse that we can use while charging. Speaking of charging, this fancy USB-C cable that also matches the iMax color has no limitations. It supports data transfer and quick charging, so you can use it with your iPhone normally. The power brick is quite massive, it's even bigger than the big 16-inch MacBook Pro power brick. And if you add $30 more, it will have an Ethernet port built in. And if you're buying a higher-end bundle, it is already there. But it will be just 1 gigabit not 10, which you can get when ordering Mac Mini. The cable attaches to the iMac quite easily, but it's quite hard to detach it, so don't expect it to be disconnected after every movement. But the other part of the cable indeed has a problem. I call it a cleaning lady problem. It's ridiculously easy to make it stick out of the power brick. So beware. Now it's time to talk about the frames, because everyone talks about the frames. We're returning back to the idea that this is a family computer. It's a utility, as a fridge, kettle or dishwasher, and when we buy a fridge or a kettle, we don't want it to scream about itself, like, hey, I'm a fridge, hey, I'm a kettle. We want it to be blended with the scenery. The same idea is here. The frames are actually gray, so they don't pop out that much as they would if they were white. Also in the case of Visa version, we might touch the frames quite a lot and thank goodness this color hides the fingerprints. But as a developer and video editor, I want my computer to be a computer. I don't care if it pops out of my white wall, I actually want it to have black frames. So I've decided to fix it and compare my feeling about the iMac if it had black frames. Once I did it, I felt like this is what I want it to be. I'm aware that the design may be damaged, but it suddenly became the pro tool for coding, color grading and photo editing. So I'm pretty sure when Apple will introduce a more powerful iMac, maybe it will call it iMac Pro again, it will definitely have black frames. Well, now let's remove this tape. As for the screen, it's mind-blowing for its price. The best take that I ever heard so far is, can we throw away this Mac Mini inside and attach this amazing screen to our MacBooks? Because for this money, it's so, so good. 23.5 inches, 4.5K, 218 pixels per inch, 500 nits, P3 color space, true tone technology, perfect viewing angles. I really wish they could sell such screens separately. Underneath the screen we have the speakers and the cooling system. The sound is fine, I would say. Again, for the family computer it's great. The sound is better than M1 MacBook Pros, but it's still not as good as the other Intel iMacs. 
The cooling system is quiet on most of the tasks, but I've managed to turn it on when I was converting video files in Handbrake. And in this case, the iMac was a tiny bit louder than the MacBook Pro. But well, it's nothing compared to the Intel's MacBook Pro, which is like a rocket engine. Note though that if you'd go with the cheapest iMac, it will have only one fan instead of two in the more expensive models. And that fan will have no heatsink with the CPU. I did a few tests with the entry model versus this one and here's what I found. So if you plan to do some heavy tasks or you're used to have many apps open at the same time, I'd suggest you to go with the higher model. Now let's check the ports. Of course it has an audio jack, it's on the side because the iMac is that thin. But I want to talk about these four guys. Well, or two in the case of a cheaper model. Remember, when a USB 3 was released, manufacturers had to label them in blue so we could distinguish USB 3 from USB 2. Apple never did that because all USB ports were USB 3 in their devices. So you didn't have to bother guessing. And back then, it was quite rare for a manufacturer to have all ports to be USB 3.0. Now we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports and two USB-C ports. So if I want to plug something specifically to the USB-C port, I have to count. Okay, this is Thunderbolt, next is probably the other Thunderbolt. Okay, this is probably USB-C, fine. M1 does support USB-A ports, we saw it in the Mac Mini. But they were so obsessed to make it thinner than the Apple Watch, so that USB-A wouldn't fit here. You may have a question, why would you care which port to use, because they are basically the same. And I'll tell you why. First of all, if you need to attach an extra display, you can do it only via a Thunderbolt port. Two other ports don't support video transmission. I tried USB-C to DisplayPort cable and USB-C to HDMI cable, and they both could output 4K60 without a problem when connected to the Thunderbolt port, of course. You can actually use the USB-C port to attach your tablet in the sidecar mode, in case you need to go wild with a third screen. But the bigger problem with the ports was the speed of the SSDs. I used Samsung SSDs for a long time. T3, T5, T7, they didn't pay me, it's just my personal choice. Maybe there are better SSDs. So I was expecting some level of speed, but then I decided to measure and I was shocked with the results. The Samsung USB-C SSDs work more stable when connected via USB-C than via Thunderbolt. I've checked some forums and people say it's because some controllers inside SSDs don't get along with the latest Thunderbolt USB 4 ports on Apple Silicon Macs. And people complain on losing from 5 to 20% of the speed compared to the Intel machines. So if I'm using SSDs, I connect them to the USB-C ports. When using an Intel machine for video calls, I always have to switch to the headphones because the fans are so loud that the internal microphone doesn't filter them out. So the people on the other side keep hearing them as a background noise. However, with the iMac, you actually can use the internal microphone for calls because this machine doesn't turn on the fans and its microphone does a great job in filtering the noises out. Here we can compare the quality of three web cameras that three devices produce and to me, the webcam of the MacBook is the best so far. I really like the white balance and the brightness level. But if you are in a relatively dark environment like me right now, then maybe the iMac is a better choice. Also speaking of the iPhone camera, well, I, I like the quality, but I've noticed that the white balance is usually wrong. But well, when did we care about the white balance in the webcam recently? So this is the latest iMac on Visa mount. To whom I would recommend it? So first of all, if you just need a desktop device for watching videos, browsing, or do simple work like typing texts, spreadsheets, and even editing photos and videos from your family album, this is the device that you need. You can even buy the entry model. Just know that it will have only one fan, 
the keyboard won't have touch ID, so no instant switching between the users, the power brick won't have an Ethernet port, and you won't have all the colors available. If you plan to edit a lot of 4K or 8K footage or tons of photos every day, basically any real professional stuff and not just one-time edit, then I would wait until Apple reveals a more powerful iMac. And of course, I highly recommend the Visa version because it gives you so much more freedom. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them below. I hope this video was useful for you. It's been Alex and see you at the Geek's Table. Bye-bye.